What's going on guys? JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today we're going to be doing my match review, match reaction and match analysis of Manchester City's match against Aston Villa in the Premier League in what might well be the worst performance from Manchester City under Pep Guardiola that we've ever seen. We'll digest everything there is to talk about. Before I do crack on with this video though, make sure like always if you are enjoying the content, do subscribe to the channel. Also don't forget social media links, they're in the description if you want to go and check out my Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. Also don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Why did we lose this game? Let me know your thoughts. In the comments, also don't forget as well, I know it's hard, but please do leave a thumbs up. I know there's nothing to like about the performance, but it does let me know that you are digging the vids. So please do leave a thumbs up, 100 likes is the aim. So let's start by speaking about the teams for this game. We didn't have any Jack Grealish, we didn't have any Rodri, both suspended. No Kevin De Bruyne, he's injured. No Jeremy Doku, he's injured. I'm not using that as an excuse. Manchester City in the summer, you prepare your squad ready that you're going to have suspensions, that you're going to have injuries. You need to be prepared for that. We knew that Kevin De Bruyne was going to be out injured for a long time when the summer transfer window was open. We know that we've had a, over 12 months of reliability on Rodri, so we knew we needed to add a central midfielder. We went after Declan Rice. We didn't get Declan Rice. We didn't go out there and look for anybody else. We decided we want to go and sign a defender in Instead, when in my opinion we didn't need to go out there and spend a load of money on a defender but we did anyway and then you let vital players to a treble winning squad Riyad Mahrez, Ilkay Gundogan you let these players leave all of a sudden you end up with a squad that in my opinion right now aren't as good as last season and there's the big problem these teams are always improving they're always wanting to play catch up and when the teams around you uh, always adding quality and getting better and better and you're at the top and you get worse that gap shrinks that's exactly what's happened so far this season it's exactly what has happened we're on a great winning run uh, right at the beginning parts of the season we weren't playing particularly well we had that little treble uh, feel good factor carrying on over into the start of the season you go up against a team or two that are capable of taking a result off City and then all of a sudden questions get asked you do a little response, you start to get your players back from injury, these injuries and suspensions come back and all of a sudden then Manchester City just haven't got the answer didn't have the answer against Chelsea didn't have the answer against Liverpool, didn't have the answer against Spurs and saved the worst of the lot for this away match against Aston Villa that what I saw from Manchester City today was nothing short of disgraceful I feel sorry for the 3,000 City fans that went down to Villa Park to watch Manchester City create two opportunities inside 30 seconds in the 10th and 11th minute of this game because other than that Manchester City didn't do anything look at the statistics Aston Villa were all over Manchester City they outplayed us right from the first minute right to the very last not good enough at all at all from Manchester City uh, there's excuses that we can come out with against Spurs you can think about the referee not being clinical enough uh, you, you can feel hard done by etc etc you can go to the Liverpool game you can speak about refereeing decisions again not being clinical enough and defensively looking a little bit suspect same talking points there against Chelsea however Manchester City tried to change this up, went a little bit more defensive, more like this Arsenal away match that we played at the Emirates. We came away with a 1-0 loss thanks to a deflected goal because we just weren't positive enough. And we come away from Villa Park, 1-0 loss, deflected goal, no attacking intent from Manchester City today. And it's just not good enough. There's no creativity in that team that was put out there. Um, there was no control in midfield. The defence, again, even though we only conceded one, was all over the place. Aston Villa really should have scored three or four. A more clinical team today would have scored three or four past Manchester City. And I wouldn't have begrudged Aston Villa if they did put the chances away for them to have won this game by three or four goals. They deserve to win this game. They deserve to win this game more comfortably than what they ended up winning this game by. And that is not good enough. Aston Villa leapfrog Manchester City. We're now in fourth place. We're three points clear of Manchester United. We're looking over our shoulder. And we're in fourth place. I think questions need to be asked right now of the Manchester City squad, of the players, of everybody at the club. I really do think questions need to be asked. I don't get how in six months you can go from being the best team in Europe 
to struggling game after game after game against any team that's half decent. And it's really poor from Manchester City. They're not sticking to the game plans. They're not doing what they need to do. They're not measuring up situations at, at the right time. And I look towards Pep Guardiola, the highest paid manager, club manager in the world. I look towards Pep Guardiola, not just for inspiration, but I look for him to change things up. And this formation that City have been going with that's worked so well since February, going with the back three, it just simply isn't working, especially with the midfield that we've got on offer that we can offer right now. It isn't working. The midfield's all over the place. Uh, you've got players playing out of position. Rico Lewis today is a right back playing attacking midfield. You've got uh, a striker playing in central midfield. You've got a, two centre backs playing in central midfield. There was no recognised central midfielder for Manchester City. And the only positive I take from this game was first 15 minutes of that second half, City had a little bit of control of this game. Other than that, for the rest of the game, they were creating nothing. There were no dangers. They weren't causing Aston Villa any problems. Aston Villa's never had it more comfortable at home. That's a comfortable Aston Villa performance. They'll be going home right now. They'll be saying to themselves, well, this Manchester City team's very overrated. What was everybody raving for? I've seen better teams come to Villa Park so far this season. And do you know what? They're probably right. That today for Manchester City quite simply was pathetic. It was not good enough. I don't think it's going to take very long for Man City's analysis to sit down and analyse this performance because they're just going to look at it and just go, do you know what? That was terrible. Literally anything that they, they, they could do was done bad in this game. I don't have any positives to take from this game. Nothing at all. They've got four days recovery to go and prepare for Luton Town away from home. Another match on the road against a team that's notorious for raising their game whenever good teams come to their stadium. You don't get any bigger than the current Premier League champions coming to their home. They will play up and it won't be easy for City. Arsenal very nearly got stung yesterday and it wouldn't surprise me if City got stung. Liverpool have already been stung at Kenilworth Road. We face the prospect here of going five consecutive Premier League games without a win. These difficult games, Chelsea away, Liverpool at home, Spurs at home, Aston Villa away. Ten points last season we took from them. That was so important in us winning the Premier League. We've taken three. Seven points. That is massive. That's seven points we have to pick up where I wouldn't expect us to pick them points up. I was saying before this game, we need to go to uh, we need to go to Anfield, we need to go to Spurs Stadium, and we need to pick up points. To me, the longer this run goes on, these big important games you got in the second half of the season, I know City are notoriously better in the second half of the season, this continues to the new year, we're going to face too much, in my opinion. I think Arsenal and Liverpool are too good to let something, an opportunity like that slip away. And in particular, when you're allowing teams them opportunities, we've already gifted Arsenal three points at the Emirates, we've gifted Liverpool the points at the Etihad, we now need to go to Anfield, and in my opinion, we need to beat Liverpool at Anfield. We need to beat Spurs at their stadium. And you need to make sure whenever you're going up against anybody, you're winning them games. Man City are in a position now of, of no return. There's nothing to lose. Man City may as well go all out attack against Luton Town. Because we weren't picking up wins. We weren't losing the games. They were entertaining games. That today weren't entertaining for anybody unless you was an Aston Villa fan. And I imagine most neutrals probably enjoyed it as well. But for Manchester City, there was nothing enjoyable about it. There was no, nothing creative. There was no chances of scoring. There was no chance of picking up any points from that game. None whatsoever. I don't have anything else left to say from it because it was just so bad for Manchester City. It's so un-Manchester City. I, I can't think of such a negative approach. From us. The only game that comes to mind is that Arsenal game. I understand why we did it against Arsenal. Because they wanted a point. It would have been a good point to take from the Emirates. But we're, 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 we're playing catch up at the top. So I don't understand why we've played for a point here at Villa Park. In the hope that we might be able to just sneak a win here or there. Or tighten up at the back. I, I don't know. Team selection. Not great for Manchester City. There's no leaders on that pitch. City offered absolutely nothing today. Um, and to be honest, I don't know where we go from here.
to me, we need to be making sure we're signing players in January, uh, not waiting until the summer, because I can tell you right now, the longer this continues, the less and less likely it becomes that we win that Premier League and we make it uh, four Premier League wins in a, uh, in a row. Because right now that seems far, far away and performances like that today is going to make that very unrealistic very soon. That concerns me a lot. It should concern all Manchester City fans. It should certainly be concerning the coaches and Pep. And it definitely should be concerning the players. The players right now should be really annoyed, really angry, really emotional about this game. Then players should want to go and replay that game right now and go out there and score 10 goals. If they're not feeling that way, I don't want them at this club. I don't care who they are and what they're playing for. I, I keep saying this on my live stream and I, I can't quite pinpoint what's not right at Manchester City, but I, I feel like hunger, desire and motivation go a long way. And this treble that we've won, I feel, has taken a lot of that hunger and desire away from the team it will return in the second half of the season it always does and it will be back again we're at a point though that this continues for another two or three games in the Premier League I think that's going to be too much for Manchester City to overturn in the second half of the season with the fixtures that we have available it will take Manchester City to overturn this now we're under a lot of pressure you're needing 10, 11, 12 wins in a row is, is what it will take. We are capable of doing that. My problem is this team right now aren't capable of 10, 11, 12 wins in a row. These teams that have managed to do it had leaders on the pitch. You had your Ilkay Gundogan, your Riyad Mahrez's, your David Silvers, etc, etc, your Sergio Aguero's. You had the players that have been there, done that, worn the t-shirt. Right now, we are far away. Far, far away from being Premier League champions as far as I'm concerned. And I don't want to be reactionary, but I judge off the points. Manchester City's first objective has to be clearing a gap between themselves and the likes of Spurs, Manchester United and the rest of the chasing pack. Because this continues for another two or three games, Man City won't be in the top four. And then you're under a lot of pressure not just pressure on the pitch and trophies, I'm talking financial pressure on the club as well. It's a position that we've not been in for a long, long time. Not since Pellegrini's final season have I felt such concerns. Maybe Pep's first season where we didn't look brilliant in some games. But right now, six months ago compared to now, it's far, far away from, from where we are and where we're capable of getting. And uh, to me, that what I saw today causes me a lot of concern, a lot of concern and questions must be asked from this. I expect Pep Guardiola to be making them harsh changes on Sunday against Luton. I expect the team to respond against Luton on Sunday. Because if they don't, Where do you go? What do you do? Question for the board. There we go. There are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, also, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Subscribe. Social media links in the description. Go and check them out. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, email, all the good stuff. Uh, and I'll see you all again real soon for the next Manchester City video. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Would love to know them in the comments below. I'll see you all again real soon. Abin JSGC. Peace. Ciao for now.